actually, if you can run your family, you can run a business. Technically, your your family is a business. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never heard anybody say that. Your family is a business mm -hmm. because think about it. You have your your generally the wife is managing the things at home, okay, or the kids making sure everybody eats, make sure you know the husband working so they make sure the bills get paid. You know, you have things that you're operating outside of the house. You know, you have accounts payable, you have accounts receivables, things that you're paying out income that's coming in, you know, where are things are going to be saved? So, you know, who's going to do the planning for the year? Where are we going for the summer? Your, your family is a business. Big time. All right, guys, you want to build a family business. I have a trio of people that you got to meet. Listen, this is Michael Tucker with the Million Dollar Secrets podcast. And today I brought in a good family. Like, how's it going, guys? How's hey, it going? Doing going great. good. Nice going good. I, these people, they're in some mastermind groups that I'm aware of, uh, a part of. And I was like, you know what? I have to bring them in because what they're building and they, they were sharing an event with me that they actually have coming up, which we'll talk about later. But their mission to help families build family businesses, I'm like, so cool because the stigma is don't build a family business. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Are you guys like, okay. We'll start there. You hear people say, never start a family business. You're going to fight. What's that? Like, obviously, it's working for you guys. Mm -hmm. So what's the stigma behind that and why? <clears throat> for sure. Yo, you can go ahead, though. You I think a lot of it has to do with people, you know, families can't work together. And that's actually not true because if you look back at some of the older families, you know, everything was based on their family, their empire, their legacy, uh, the Rockefellers, the um, Morgan, it was it Chase? Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. J.P. Morgan and Chase. You know, a lot of that was about the four, it was family. And then when you look at, in the black community, it was Johnson & Johnson. Right. Um, it was so many, you have Robert Smith, you have, now, now I'm, I went totally blank on some of the people that we have, but when you think about Celine Williams and Venus Williams and their dad, that was a family business, even though. And the Black was, Enterprise too. Right. Black Enterprise, the mm -hmm. Graves, even though they were sports, it was still a family business. So when you work together as a family, if you've seen some of these other families, right. if you work as a family, it becomes successful the the family business is prospering. So instead of being always separate, now it's like, and let's work together so we can, cause you, it's one, you know, three minds are better than one. You know what I'm right. saying? But yes, we all have our own talents and bringing that talent to the business, it can help your business grow faster instead of just having one person. Right, and it's so cool because you guys all have different personality types and you guys all are great at separate things. We got like the systems, mm -hmm. we got like the, the people that aren't afraid to be in front of the cameras and be like outspoken, so it's really cool. Mm -hmm. So people that are here and they're like, I just don't think that would work for my family. Like, do you think it's for every family or do you think it's only for like, varies family by family on how you can build a business together? That's a great question. I don't think we've ever had that question asked. I still I, I still firmly believe that anybody can do it as long as they Correct. take your ego out of the picture. Take your mm -hmm. ego out. Like okay. if you if you remove your pride, your ego, you can run a family business, which is something that it's you know, actively have to be aware of. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I still go through it. Like we just had a meeting where my ego was involved. What do you mean? Like, let's go into like, it. Let's, so, let's talk. Let's go so, family business. Yeah, let's dive so into like, it. So, what ego do you have? <laughs> Wait, what ego do you have, bro? All right. So, so we, so if, before we get to that, I'll explain what it means by the meeting. So we have something called a family legacy meeting every single week. Every, every week? week? Every mm -hmm. week. And every once week. a week, you want to have a family legacy meeting and you want to break it up into two different parts. You want to talk about the business and then you want to talk about the family. Mm -hmm. Right? Now we are talking about the, the business in this sense. Um, no, we were talking about the family in this sense. I can't mm -hmm. even remember which one. I think it was the family. And like over time, over time, I got more irritated. I got more irritated. I got more irritated. And then I just shut down. I was just like, I'm not hearing anything that anybody else is saying. You got shut down or I got shut and down? It was a mixture. It was of a both mixture. Of, start <laughs> off with it was a lot of different things. But like when you're when you have a family, like sometimes you have to walk away and come back and to solve whatever issue that happens. Um, but like my ego was in the way, which it does happen. I have I with have a huge us. ego. Yeah, Which, with all of us, know. it's not just one. Um, and what's so funny is he's he's the shy one in a sense, but he's not really shy. He's our balancer because we're mm -hmm. we're always hype. 
it, yeah. Marcus and I are always <laughs> like, because we're the go getter. Yeah, no, it's not a battle. It's not necessarily a battle. It's just when you have leaders. But even though I'm the mom, I have to take the mom hat off. You know, it's not always on. Sometimes it's on, but I have to take it right. off because we're in business together, and they're men, and I have to respect them as my partners and as men. So it's not going to always be my decision because their opinions and decisions and what they bring to the table are just as important as mine. They have different viewpoints than I have. So that's what keeps us balanced because it's like you got the old school, you got the new school. Right. So that's mm-hmm. what keeps our business balanced. And that's why we're winning. I'm not, not trying to make it sound like that. <laughs> and, I, and I do want to <laughs> add something in there as well because uh, it also comes down to like when we when we make decisions, we all have to be in unison. Right. Right, right. now, more often times than not, that's pretty easy. You know what I'm saying? But because we're family, right? Sometimes we all know that we know how to get under each other's skin, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally. But we all have to come to an agreement and decide that we are all doing this, right? Right. And that sometimes can be where it gets a little bit, you know, uh where where our personalities clash. Uh, but like like Marcus said earlier, right, sometimes we just have to take a moment, think about it and then come back and say, OK, this is where I was coming from. Where were you coming from? Right. And then right. We, we sit down and kind of go over uh, the 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 details of it point by point so we can have a better understanding of who was talking about what. Like uh, uh, when we were in one of your masterminds last year and we were talking about personality types. Right. Yes. I feel like when you create a family business, you have to have a better understanding types. of the personality types mm. of your family members, right? Because you might know your family members to a certain extent, but understanding personality types and then how to communicate with Correct. those personality right. types Correct. is what continues to help us grow. I like that. Yeah. I like that. We never even did a formal introduction. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I just was, we were having such a good conversation off screen. I was like, I just want to get right yeah, into this. We so, know each other, so, so. Yeah, yeah, we already know each other. So tell everybody who you guys are, what businesses you guys run, because I think it'd be cool to just establish that from the foundation. So I know who you are, but go ahead and share it with everybody. For sure. Of course, we got to have the mom start it off. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Dr. Tamara Turner Allen, and I am the CEO of the Fanpreneurs, and I run a podcast called Pussycat Talk Podcast. I'm Alexander Turner. I am the soul behind uh, <laughs> Fanpreneur. If you, will. you said, uh, "What do you mean when you say soul?" Uh, <laughs> I keep everything lively and going. Uh, but no, uh, I'm the CMO, so I deal with all the marketing in okay. regards to our business. Uh, I also have my own podcast called Athletes Wisdom Podcast, where. Uh, I go over the branding and business side uh, for college athletes in regards nice. to kind of helping them start their own business and their brand. For sure. And the brains. You got, you're the soul, and then we got the brains over here. Exactly. <laughs> Wait a minute. What am I then? You're okay. the visionary. Oh, I'm the exactly. visionary? Okay. Exactly. All right. Well, then I need to redo mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but my, I'm, I'm Marcus Turner. I am the COO of the Fanpreneurs, and um, I deal with a lot of the building the culture, scaling the business side of uh, of the fanpreneurs and I have my own podcast. Of course we have our own uh mm-hmm. the fanpreneur like all three of us together as well with the fanpreneur podcast. podcast. Um and we're building the the individual podcast that we have because I have the Black Rockefellers podcast mm-hmm. as my individual. I'm big on financial literacy so it only makes sense, but we're building our own network like we just discussed right. um earlier. And so we're just we're using our individual podcasts as a starting as a starting point of that. Nice. Yeah, to funnel through to our fanpreneurs because again, that's like they say, I'm the visionary. So everything I see things in completion. Mm-hmm. And so for us, to be quite honest, we have been working together ever since they were kids. Mm-hmm. So they have known nothing but a family business with their dad, mm-hmm. myself, and them. So having a family business being called the fanpreneurs. That's second nature for us because we've all they've been we've been doing it ever since they were two and four. Yeah, so man, I got so many questions for you all because I think this could go really deep. I want to go back to you were saying you do a weekly meeting. Yes, yes. Okay? Mm-hmm. sure. Yes. So I know you guys said you talk about business, you talk about family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you keep those two things? Like, should you keep them separate? Thousand or, percent. Yes, I have to take off the mom hat for sure. Okay, my husband. So, I'm do you talk there. about business first and then yes. personal yes. after? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes, yes, yes. Like yes. for for me, this is just me, but they agree. Like, I can't talk to you on a personal sense if our money is not in order. Mm. That's just me. Like, I mean, we have a family. Of course, you can have those conversations, but like, 
I want to be able to make money together first and then at least have my credit in order, my business in order. And, and it just makes it easier to have a conversation afterwards when the when the business is in order and the money's in order. Mm-hmm. Because if I talk to you and then we have money situations, we're going to have, we're, there's going to be some form of clashing involved. Yeah, as a dynamic, as a family. Right. It's, mm-hmm. it's like, <clears throat> because we're very close, the other portion of it is we're very close. So because we're very close, we do a lot of things together. We travel together. And people look at us like we're kind of crazy. Like, you know, I think... With them, they're like, you travel with your mom? And they're like, yeah, we have mm-hmm. a lot of fun. We do a lot of things together. And we want to make it normal again that families can do things together and enjoy each other's company, but also can work together as well. So, yes, the dynamics of the money is important because they have to understand financial literacy. So mm-hmm. when it came into play as my husband, my current husband, got sick, It was like there were situations in our home that financially was going. And I'm very honest with my sons, our sons, because they need to understand life is not easy. Right. And you need to know how to handle situations when they come. And then when their dad died of COVID, that was a turning point for Mm -hmm. us and our family. Because it's like even though we were no longer married and I remarried, he was still a part of the family. So it affected us. And, and it affected, it affected us. our business, too. Yeah, it affected our business. You guys had a business before COVID? Never, like, as oh, a, yes. like a, family, a family business? <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. It, affect, it changed the whole dynamic of who we are because COVID was a really, it was a turning point for us because he died the day after his birthday last week, to be honest, yeah. on August the 5th. Wow. And then the following year, I caught COVID and I almost died. Wow. So those were dynamics that changed how we even did our previous business and changing our name. And had we not had certain things in place financially, because I'm the one, you know, that really kind of handled everything in the house. If it wasn't for me saying, Marcus, this is where everything is. He took care of everything. Alex was the one that was like, Mom, what do you need at the hospital? Because my husband was going through it. My current husband, he, was, <laughs> he had lost his mind at the time. He was like... I don't know what I'm, what, you know, he, he couldn't even function. Let me put it that way. So it was, it, so it was important for us to one, have therapy because it was a lot going on. That was a tragic moment for our family right. dynamic Two, financially. We were able to prosper. It was crazy because our business prospered more because of COVID, but it was just so much tragedy going on around it. And three, I have to say, I'm very proud of my sons because if it wasn't for them not and you know knowing what to do, you know, the whole house could have fell apart. So that's because we have put things in place prior to. So the business itself just flourished. Everybody's working in their element. We and everybody has to have their own role because you can't do everything. And that was what the issue was for me. I was like, nope, I don't trust anybody. We're doing it ourselves. Mm-hmm. So we and so when Marcus said, Well, mom, I'll help you. So when he understood, he was like, mom, you've been doing all this by yourself all this time. I said, yes. And that's why your business can't grow the way it needs to grow. It was a lot. It was. He realized I was doing a lot. He told you that's why the business was no, a grow? Or are you just him, saying in general? In general, you can't be just a solopreneur doing everything because social media is plays such a role in our business. And I hear it is you're so busy doing the background. So right. when he saw that and recognized it. He was like, well, mom, I can help you with this. And, th- and because he already had, the, in, in a sense, the mechanical mind, operations came easy to him. Alex was the sports guy, but he is Mr. Personality, okay? So he's, you know, he's he was semi-shy, you know, to get in front of the camera at first. But then he's like, I, I got this. But the branding part became natural for them. So everything that they're doing basically is what their mom was doing. And they just for took... Sure certain parts of what I was doing and they honed it as their own. And that's what's really kind of helped our business grow because now it's not one person. It's a family dynamic. And Plus I'll, we trust each, trust each other. I'll second that too because originally Alex and I's roles were switched initially. Correct. Right? Because Alex mm-hmm. was so shy. Knowing it, you guys now, that that surprises it's, me. It's different. Yeah, because yes. he, he was a COO and I was a CMO. Mm-hmm. I was next. I was naturally. I wouldn't say I was naturally because when I think um, to kind of give history on why I decided to be more extroverted is because I was very much bullied when I was younger, mm. right? So when I was bullied when I was younger, I I had to 
not be introverted anymore and learn to be extroverted. Mm -hmm. So that's what made me right. the extrovertedness that I am now, or that, that was part of the reason why. So Alex was shy at the time. Like he, I think at that time he just, he just shot his first video and it was a welcome video to his YouTube. Mm -hmm. And we were like, well, I think that, I think, and he was like, I'm not sure if I want to be on a camera yet. And I was like, well, operations may be something that is, that may work for you because he mm -hmm. has an analytical, he has a more yeah, analytical mind than it, I do. Yes, <laughs> he's he see, I'm learning new and new, the robotic more new mind. things. Yeah, yeah, he's more yeah. analytical than I am. He like, really is. He, I just picked up because I had to. Oh, There's a difference. Okay. I'm naturally a, like we were talking about a neo. That's how I naturally am. Do you get what I'm saying? The analytical side happened because somebody had to do it. Right. right. So like like because like I remember when I was younger, um, I was big into the music industry. And no, and somebody had to mix the song. Somebody had to master the song. Somebody had to distribute this. Somebody had to learn the business. So I naturally had, I just did it because no one else was going to do it. So like the analytical side just grew over time. That's right. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like we're on here. Correct. I'm naturally a red. Right. So like, but like you got to like, like what my brother was saying, you got to understand personality types because I'm a red only in business. But when it comes, but when to it's behind, personal, yeah. I'm not a red. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Like right. it really depends on where where I'm at. Like if I'm in a relationship, I am a straight analytical. I overthink everything. <laughs> yeah. If I'm in a relationship, a I'm like for dating. I'm like I do. I got everything. A yeah, funnel that's, for dating. That's that's a whole nother. Yeah, that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> yeah, I just it's <laughs> a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother. But, but like, but like I'm very anal. I overthink. Everything. Are you dating anybody right now? No, I'm not dating anybody anymore right now. No. That's what I thought. No, I'm just saying no. But like, if I, when I was in relationships, I was like, dang, should I call her? Should I not call her? Dang, should I should I hit her up? Should I not hit her up? Like, I'm very like, okay, if I hit her up, then what would like? I'm one of those type no, of people. Cool. Well, it just it just shows like personalities in business, right? You have to know. You're getting back to saying mm -hmm. you have to know the personalities, mm -hmm. right? And so many people. No, they don't. They skip that part and they wonder why they're not driving because yeah. you said you exactly. can't you can't communicate in effective ways because you don't know the other person in a deeper level. For sure. So what do you guys say for people that are like, I've never done any personality. I, I don't know where to go. How do you mm -hmm. go about finding like those personalities and diving deep into a family like each of the person's personality types? Is that something that what, I, can, what are I, can, I can I can answer yeah. that one. So it really starts off with Google. Truth be told, like, I mean, because, I because it's, 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 everything is, we're in an age now that information is so easily accessible that people have analysis paralysis, right? right. So they have mm -hmm. so many different options in front of them. They get paralyzed on which one to choose, right? Just pick the first one that you see and you have to start somewhere, right? So what do you Google? So you, I would say you Google a uh, personality type quiz, okay, right? Or disc assessment quiz, mm -hmm. D-I-S-C quiz. You, you, you and right. I both know that. But, um, and then take a simple test, whether it's a free free version to start off with or a paid version and then just kind of depending on what you're looking for right if you're trying to learn all of the different personality types and yeah go into more right. research and understanding the personality types and things like that but if you're just trying to start off right and just like get a better understanding of it it's just uh for one just looking up the different types of personalities there are understanding what they are and how they communicate right Right. And then understand how to communicate with them. Correct. Then from there, obviously, you want to learn what type of personality type you are, because you can be a mixture of more than one personality type. Correct. It's not just one personality right. type that that you're you, that you're just in or that uh, your partner or your business partner or relational partner, whatever the case is. So it's just understanding and get a better understanding of what's immediately around you. So when you're talking to someone and interacting with someone, because most people learn from doing, right? Mm -hmm. So you can only do so much research. So after you learn that stuff, right, just start implementing it with the people that you interact with right. on a daily basis. And then from there, it'll just kind of build on top of each other. You know, the cool yeah, thing I'm is, school, though. well, you mean old school? Because all that right there, what is, I, I learned from the colors. Okay. You know, the jewel, color, red, blue, green, yellow, right? Um, how to deal with who's the party animal, Who's the one that wants to save the world? Who's the analytical and who is money motivated? Mm -hmm. So those represented colors, very similar to what he's talked about in DISC. So that so you have to find, and even when you're talking to people, you have to know how to talk to them. If somebody's a party animal, they're not going to want to work. So you got to find things that they like to do inside fun. of the, co the company that's going to be fun for them to do right if they're a person that wants to save the world we got to make sure there's some community service 
that's a part of it. So they can feel like they are very much giving. Up, yeah, giving back to the community. If it's the analytical, we got to make sure they're dealing with the structure mm -hmm. and the functions mm -hmm. and things like right. that. And if it's money motivated, we got to make sure if they're it's the shark, <laughs> like, okay, when we get paid, you know, like I'm doing all this work, Fucks. I need to get paid. Right. So we have to make sure, you know, he said it in the disc, but then there's another simpler way. It's like, we have to make sure all four of these personalities are taken care of because if it's not, then it'll be more, two people or one person doing more of the work than the other person. Right. And that's something that we had to make sure it's like, okay, you cannot carry your weight. We don't really have, so you have that. like those deep. Uh, yeah, so you, you don't have that problem, but we used to, if you ever had, how did you have those conversations? Somebody wasn't pulling their weight. They're like, you have, a, there's maybe people here watching right now. Mm -hmm. They have a partnership and the partner is not, I'd, I'd, I'd like to I'd like to comment on that. So I was saying in the beginning, right? Uh, <laughs> I wasn't pulling my weight the way I needed to be, right? So hey, it was just, he took it. Hey, I'm, it was, I'm proud of you, bro. It was just uh, them being <laughs> honest and it. saying like, "Hey, like we're doing this, that, and the third. Like, because let me step back a little bit. When we formulate the business, we had an understanding of what our roles were, what mm -hmm. we're supposed to do, and mm -hmm. essentially what the compensation was for those roles, mm. right? Now, obviously, from there, we all agreed. We signed the actual contract, too, because well, although we're family, this is business yes, we're talking about, right? Absolutely. So we so we signed the contract. And then from there, moving forward to what I was saying, right, it got to a point in which I wasn't pulling the weight that I was supposed to. And they sit down and said, hey, you're not doing the things that you said you were going to do, that you said that, hey, mm -hmm. I'll take uh, uh, I'll take this role. So you can't technically be expected to be paid the same amount right. if you're not, if we're doing all the work. You see what I'm saying? You can't, let's just say, a $10,000 deal comes in and after all expenses, right? I get my percentage, he gets his percentage and she gets her percentage, right? There's like, technically you don't deserve this money, right? right. So we're gonna give it to you obviously because we know, you know, the your intentions, yada, yada, and because they're family, that's really why they gave it to me. But business-wise, I didn't deserve the money. So it just comes down to having those difficult conversations and this is where it kind of ties back into when you're asking about the uh, our family meetings, right? It starts off with business first so we can address some of those business issues at hand. <clears throat> Say, hey, this is what's happening in the business. This is what mm -hmm. is going good, what's going bad, who needs to step up, where we need to improve on. And so then when we move into the family aspect of the bit of the of the meeting, right, all of the because because money, like Marcus said earlier, that can be a determining factor in a number of ways. Right. Both positive and negative. So getting that out the way first helps us then transition into the family meeting aspect. So there aren't any hard feelings or if there are, we can talk about it in a family manner. Right. And whatever hard feelings that someone may have, I mean, we generally squash it during that meeting. You know, uh, it's like, because that's where the family portion comes in at. So we're discussing and working through it, you know, but there's times when we've had some heated arguments and I, I won't even say arguments. They were more discussions. Sometimes they're arguments. <laughs> It's yeah, okay. let's be honest. We're family. It's just, sometimes you go into <laughs> arguments. Sometimes there are debates, discussions. It just depends. I think more of a, it's more of a debate. And it, and, and there will be a clash, this, that, and that. But generally within that hour, it's squashed because you can't, we, we can't go on. You know, we have a business to run. And we can't, you know, be all in our feelings, you know, during the week and all this other stuff. Easier that affects pr productivity. And I'm... We're not about effect productivity. That's not going to happen. But, but it is. Sometimes it's hard, you know. And it's like, you know, it, me being the parent in the very beginning, it was like, do as I say, you know, because it's old school. You know, I'm just like I'm the parent. But it's it it took someone to say, when you're working, say, okay, let me take my mom hat off. All right. right? And now we're in business. Now this mm -hmm. is your partner talking to you. And so sometimes I think that you know. Sometimes they try to get me and be like, well, mom, you didn't say that. You know, he calls me Dr. T. He still calls me Mama Mia doing business. I was <laughs> like, okay, so we have to change that. You need to call me, you know, by my name because it switches. Because even for them sometimes, they still think as me as mom in the business from time to time. For sure. <clears throat> Just from, from time to time. But at the end of the day, I'm still responsible for what I need to do. He's responsible. He stepped up. And our business has changed because of it. Everybody's playing their role at this moment. And it's been so amazing to see the roles change and to see them flourish into their roles. It's 
I can't even begin to say how proud I am mm -hmm. because of it, but it just shows that we did the right thing. And it came to character too. So let's roll that back. Him not carrying his weight at the time was about character for me. So what's your core value? Like, how are you raised? Like, what, you know, we're not going to... I was raised how you raised me. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you're a spoiled brat, but at the end of the day, you know, do you really think that that's fair? Do you want somebody to treat you like that? So why would you do that to us? Don't take advantage of us, and we won't take advantage of you. So it, it was some heavy conversations, and, and it came down to integrity and character. And that's what we pride ourselves in being out there to other people when we're providing services right. to them. Integrity and character. So That's the question is, to... does your family have core values? Oh, right? most definitely. Yeah. And so I know you're all yes. do, but the people listening, I don't, I don't think people think about that. Like they don't, mm -hmm. all they're worried about is putting food on the table, making sure the kids are taken care of, making sure the kids go off to high school, college. I really think about intentional parenting, which we were talking about. Because mm -hmm. I have a little girl, and so we were talking about the changes that come with having a family now and so intentional parenting is something we've been diving into and core values is something really cool so how would you go about instructing people they find their core values how did you guys find your core values for your family mm. and how would you guide other people <laughs> who are starting and i think maybe don't you do you guys think maybe that it should start before the family comes Just, um that's kind of hard to say it's like um okay so when you're creating your core values I'm going, to, I'm going to answer your first question. How do you create I know there was values? a lot of questions, so I apologize. So how do you create core values? And this is something that took us time to figure out because it, it may not be one discussion. Along mm -hmm. with our mission statement. Right. It you have slightly. to individually create. So let's say, for example, Alex has to create core values, personal core values. My mom has to create personal core values, and I have to create personal core values. Mm -hmm. And then we come as a collective, and then we talk about which one aligns with everybody. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, but in order to know how to create person, how to create core values in general, you have to identify the characteristics in yourself, and then what you want your leaders to represent. And then you just come out with like three to five core values, short, sweet, nothing, nothing crazy, one or two words of what represents you and your family, right? And then from there, you go... Um, and before you even identify core values, you have to identify the vision first. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can't even create core values if you don't even know what the vision is. What's your vision of, for your family? Right. So you got to understand you got to understand the vision. Then you got to understand the mission and then you got to understand your values. Mm, OK. Do you know? So there's a process. Mm -hmm. Marcus helped bring that. He's like, Mom, I think we should do this. I was like, OK, because when, you know, in the black community, it's like we had just came from one of our family reunions and we always have family reunion, right? Every other year. And it talks about, you know, we talk about, hey, did you guys establish your trust? Did you guys, you know, put these insurances in place? And that's what they discuss at our family reunion. So in the black community, and I don't know of anyone else, so hopefully I'm not offending anyone, but even with it, but it starts at home first. It has to start at home. And believe it or not, a lot of families don't, they don't talk about that. Right. They don't talk about credit. They don't t show how to pay bills. Taboo. I mean, it's funny because although technology is great, there are a lot of things that have been lost. Like mm -hmm. how to balance a checkbook. You guys are using debit cards all the time, which you should never use. But but you're not balancing yourself out. And so it's like, then you're not paying your bills on time. And I'm like, guys, you got to pay your credit on time. Well, what do I need credit for? So it was all of these things that we had to, we have to teach, you have to teach your family because again, it affects the bottom line. What you do financially affects the whole dynamic of your household and your family. Because if you're overspending, if you don't have good credit, it determines where you eat, what you drive, and where you live. So for us, the core value is making sure that we're sound financially and so that we can do some of the things that we want to do as a family and individually. Yeah, like one of our core values is family first. Yes. That's the main, if, if that's not the most important core value that we have, that's the most important. That's the so number that one. That or integrity. Yeah, that, yes. that for sure. Like we have, we, we have five core values, but like those are the two things that are like super important for us. And what resilience, we, right? And what we determine, what we, and I, and I was just doing some research recently is that it does it. We have to think like way back when when the tribes was 
established. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like when tribes were established, like they would go to the elders and they would the elders would make decisions and blah 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 blah, right? And they had something called um family governance, right? Like you pretty much create a family government within your family. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like they're not, like to kind of break it down in a simpler terms. You know how the government has a legislative branch, a judicial mm-hmm. branch, and executive branch, right? So the legislative branch where people aren't aware is like people who create the laws. Right. The judicial is the Congress and the executive is pretty much the enforcers, which is like the president and everything. Right. And so when you're doing the legislative branch, those are the people that's where you have like your family meetings. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's where you determine what things are going to get done. Your core values, your, you know, your uh, vision, mission and values. You start having your annual family meetings because it doesn't just go from weekly family meetings. Mm -hmm. You want to have annual family meetings as well. Right. And there are even some quarterly meetings involved, but like that's not really that's more like for the executive branch. Right. The executive branch. Our is, elders that are in those them. are like your family council. Yes. Right. So your family council are the people that that really come together either on a quarterly or on an annual basis. And they're the ones that are like your they're like your uh, the democracy of things. Right. Mm-hmm. So one, the the when it comes to the family assembly, that's what the that's what the legislative branch is actually called it's the family assembly so that's like your weekly meetings your annual meetings right and those meetings you vote for the family you vote people to be in the family council right so like it's legit like a government you're voting people to be in certain positions to be able to make decisions big decisions that for the entire family then you got the judicial branch which is like the congress of things that's where your elders are You can either call them your advisory council or the council of of elders, which everyone works. Right. Those are the people that, you know, they give those legends, those stories, those myths and pass those things down. And then they're the ones that for wisdom. Yeah, they're they're, exactly. Do you get what I'm saying? So like and and the meetings also vote for the people who's going to be the elders. So like it's really it's really deeper than just I just need a family business. Correct. It's more of. I need to understand how to operate because the business can be in the family as well. You got to understand how the how the family operates and then you'll be able to actually if you can run your family, you can run a business. Technically, your your family is a business. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never heard anybody say that your family is a business Mm -hmm. because think about it. You have your you're generally the wife is managing the things at home. Okay. Or the kids, making sure everybody eats, make sure, you know, the husband working so they make sure the bills get paid. You know, you have things that you're operating outside of the house. You know, you have accounts payable, you have accounts receivables, things that you're paying out, income that's coming in. You know, where are things going to be saved? So, you know, who's going to do the planning for the year? Where are we going for the summer? Your, Your family is a business. Family balance sheets, family yes. income sheets, family profit and loss. They're all they're all the same. But people don't look at it that way. And so when people ask, you know, I remember Neil asking, how did you get your sons on the same page? I said, I used to say, she I'll threatened beat us. Them. <laughs> okay. No, for she real. threatened us. That's, we, it's funny it's, now. <laughs> yeah. But that's what it was. <laughs> well, they're not scared not of me. Not physically threatened. Right. They're not scared not of me now. But, but, just... but I, you know, like, guys, you have to understand that, you know, Again, not speaking in reference to race, I said you are black men and you have to do things differently and we have to put things in place in case something happens. And lo and behold, something happened. And if those things were not in place, it would have been chaos. And so not everybody has that. Not everybody thinks about that. They just go through life like a walking zombie. Oh, I got to go to work. You know, and people are literally driving themselves to work their their car is driving them. They don't think about it. They're, right. They're going to work to pay bills. Oh, I got to go to work to pay bills. You're not thinking about your future, how to plan things out. You know, so you have to start saying, okay, what can I do outside of a job? What can I do in creating a business? Turn my talents into a profit. What can we as a family do together? You know, everybody, we still have our own individual things that we do. Our family business, the fanpreneurs, is our main business. And that's showing that you can still have individuality in the business, but you can still run a business together. Bernard or not family is a perfect example of that. All yes. the major designer brands that you think of, Louis, Fendi, Gucci, all, all this perfumes. And one family owns all of that. Mm-hmm. Right. 
but there are multiple different businesses that quote unquote compete with each other. But really that's just them competing with each other to continue to build up each business, build up profits, build up clientele, revenue, notoriety, whatever the case is. But so, so to the outside world, it looks like, oh, wow, they're, they're competitors. But right. in all reality, there is collaboration over competition. And it's friendly competition. We used to go work out in the mornings together. And Alex, I was like, why are you trying to compete with me? <laughs> you remember that? You talk about with Nigel? Yes. Well, yeah. at the t- I was like, why are you competing with me? You know, Don't I compete with myself. Get, I, I, I just got to get this. I said, no, you're trying to compete. You can never compete with me. <laughs> so we have our little friendly competitions that we have within the family. It, it helps push each each other to do better because <laughs> we, we know that it's really no competition, but we Correct. all have a competitive mindset, right. Right? right? So it's just really just like healthy. Exactly. It's it's like, okay, I'm going to push myself, but I know I'm going to push you as well. Because like I said, it's kind of going back to that personality type. Like we know that we're all competitive. So if I just kind of egg you on a little bit, I know you're going to push yourself harder, which right. is essentially still going to push me harder. And then we're both going to, or all, all of us are going to get better. Like we're, we're not a competition right now, but we're juicing together. Well, he's like, oh, I'm still going to eat, <laughs> but, we're, <laughs> but we're juicing. I'm a carnivore, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> But so we we just have so many. And that's the thing. You get to learn your family. You know, some family members don't even know their family members. They don't have conversations with them. They don't even know what they like, what they dislike. You know, so this gives us an opportunity to just have true conversations. Get to like the people that you, you know, that's your family members because some family members don't even like each other. So it has really changed how, you know, and. And I, and I say to them, I say, when you go out in the world, remember you're representing your family. So act accordingly. And this is when they were younger. So now I don't even have to say that because your core value, your, I used to say, what's your core value? You remember I used to say that? I said, your core value when you're out there is going to dictate how mm-hmm. you're going to act. Okay? So for me, you know, like I said, it's, it's an absolute honor to be in business with my mm-hmm. sons as men because they're not little boys anymore. They're men. And I respect them wholeheartedly. And they're my best friends. So it's just been amazing. It's been amazing. My bad. It's been a lecture more than an interview. <laughs> <laughs> I think people will find value from it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we'll learn something. Marcus. So real quick, real quick. Oh. So people are watching and, um, you know, they may have, they don't have a fan, like they don't have kids. Right. So you know, white husband and wife. Correct. Maybe the husband wants to start a business. With, you know, with the wife, the wife doesn't really see it that way or vice yeah. versa. The wife has this big idea. Husband, yeah, not bought into the vision. Mm-hmm. How do you get, how do you get them to buy into the vision or do you tr- even try? Do you show them first before getting them bought into the vision? Like, what's that look like? Well, I can Is actually it, answer on that because of you're not married. You can't ex- answer that. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I, I can answer that, that. <laughs> uh, because it. of my ex-husband, I mean, the boy's dad, my ex-husband, um, sometimes we moved in different directions. And what's crazy was the reason why also the boys know about business is because my, you know, their dad and I, we, when we started dating, we went into business with each other. So we've mm-hmm. known nothing but business. But there are times when a partner is like, oh, you've tried this, you've tried that. It's not going to work. You're going to have that in some relationships. Um, the best thing that I can say to do is leave a, no, I'm playing. I'm joking. Even when to say that, it is I'm hard joking. to be on the same page. Sometimes there are a lot of couples who don't see eye to eye. Um, one person wants to do a tur- I've seen marriages actually dissolve because one person wants to do a business and the other one didn't, but you have to, um, one respect each other, have us, you know, sit down with each other and say, look, sometimes you need a therapist involved. So we talk about family therapy and what we do as well, because that's super duper important. But sometimes you have to sit down with that person and say, look, you know, I just need you to give me six months a year. Let me try this out. Um, If it doesn't work, I'll Mm -hmm. let it go. But, you know, the other person has to be willing to say, "Okay, I trust you enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, if this is something that you want to do, I value you and I trust you enough to help you see it through. Right. And if it doesn't work. So you're saying there may be a trust issue there. Oh yeah. It's definitely if, a trust situation. If there's a com or like a, I don't Most know, definitely. like some kind of obstacle there. Most definitely. What I've seen her do that I'll never forget. And she's even done that with us is 
What are you Sometimes. laughing at? See, she's already laughing before you even said anything. I know, because she, she already knows. Because they're like, Mom, I'm not doing that. It's, it's, it, what, what I've seen that always happens is um, it's bigger than just a trust issue. It's a vision issue, right? So, like, what happens is that you're, you're, the, the husband and the wife don't have the same vision. Mm-hmm. So what right. what hap- this so is what I've seen that happens. Visualize the same vision. Correct. So what I what I always tell people to do is this is what most people do. The the husband or the wife will go to an event, right? And then they'll get super pumped up and excited mm-hmm. and they want to do the business and then they come home and feed their spouse the dog food. Yep. And be like, "This is what I want them to do. This is what we got to do. I'm excited." But then they're like, "Well, I don't get it." Right. So what I always suggest, and I've seen her do all the times, is just both of you go to the event. Yep. Bring your spouse with you. That'll solve probably ninety percent of your lot problems. Of, a lot you get of what I'm saying? So yeah. you're saying it's because there's no unity before that that mm-hmm. conversation. Yeah. There's no unity before that conversation even happens. Mm-hmm. Correct. And because then the trust will happen. It. They still may not be interested and be like, okay, I saw it, but I'm still not interested. That's cool. But you still have to say, well, you were exposed to it. Mm-hmm. This is something that I would I'm interested in doing. And if you can give me some time to work it out, let me try. You know, well, try is a negative. Let me work and see how it works because you have to be very careful in your words too. Let me. Try, let me work it out and see how it how what manifests. Give me six months. Give me a year. Give me eighteen months. During that time frame, you should know if something is working for you or not within mm-hmm. six months to a year. Right. And if it's mm-hmm. not working, then move on. And you can say, "Hey, I tried it. It didn't work out. Thank you for allowing me to do it. Now, what is it that you want to do?" But sometimes it takes taking turns. And, and another thing, what that does, as far as when Marcus was saying, bring them along with, because like I said earlier, it helps them visualize what you're visualizing, right? Mm -hmm. And another way to help them along that is we all describe things differently, but we're all visual learners, Mm -hmm. right? So you you remember when when you were in school, like when they talked about the different type of learning, auditory, kinetic, visual, understand what type of learner they are as well. And that kind of goes a little Mm -hmm. bit back into personality types, right? But understanding who you're working with. So if we're both visual learners, okay, whether you, let's just say one situation you didn't go to the event with me, one situation you did go to the event with me, right? If you didn't go to the event with me, I need to craft it in a way that you're able to visualize it the best way that's best for you. Mm -hmm. And if you did go with me, but let's just say like uh, Dr. T, my mom said that they're still not with it, just still make sure that they understand the vision that you're doing. Because then what that also does is let's just say their partner, your partner, whatever it is, is not fully committed they can also drain your energy. Oh, yes. Right. Like Vampires. they can, they can, whether knowingly, like intentionally or unintentionally, right? You're coming and you're excited. You're telling them about this dream that you have, this big vision. They don't see it or they don't understand it. So even if they are trying to support you, right, they still aren't able to quite do it because now they're like, okay, I don't, I don't I'm not on the same energy level that you're on. So like right. now that you're up here, like you as an individual, you're up here, but then your partner's down here y'all are eventually still going to balance out. So maybe they might come up a little bit, but you're still coming down, right? So you have to help them actually visualize it so they're not draining your energy, so they can see the vision, so they can understand the necessary steps to help you get to that point. Mm. Good conversations, guys. I know our time's coming up. I know you guys have other things to go on to. So real quick, before we end this out, I know you guys have an event, so we're going to talk about that. So give people an opportunity to learn more about that, how they can attend. What would be like one piece of advice? I know you gave many, many pieces of advice, but just one last words you would give to people who want to f- build a family business. They have this, they already have the vision, right? They're like, yeah, I want to do this. Like, but now they just got to start. So what would, what would the advice be to get them started in that family business? You first you start. You, you sure? <laughs> yeah, you start. I was just going to say okay, to start. start. Yeah. Honestly, like, like figure out. So I feel like, to, to first put it like uh, put it on paper, right? Yes. Because when you write things out, when you it helps you for one visualize it better. So then when you're also telling it to other people, right? It helps them have a better understanding of what they're looking at. And I'll kind of let Marcus pivot into the next one right there. <laughs> uh, write the vision, make it play. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's about the exit plan. 
you can start all day. People start businesses every day, but people don't have the exit in mind. They don't, they don't, the vision is nice. The, the hype is nice. The goal is nice. We could talk about it all day, but like, what is the actual exit plan? What is the goal for what we're doing? I feel like if you know the goal and you know the reason why you're doing these things and you figure out the why, sometimes I feel like somebody's why isn't strong enough. Mm-hmm. I always say that your why should make should you make, you make you cry. That's how strong your why should be. Some people's whys aren't strong enough. Some people always says it's for my family. Everybody says it's for their family. Well, I want to make money. Yeah, I everybody it. says be those. More than that. But like, it has to be deeper than just the rooted of money and family. Like, it has to be something like that that that's painful because they say that in, in uh, a successful uh, millionaire has three things. Is there's three there's three character traits character traits that uh, a successful person has. I can't remember the third one, but the first one is they have an insane insecurity. Mm-hmm. The second one is they have an, an insane ego, right? And then I, the third one, I can't really remember. But you, got, you got that one down, Pat. Yeah, so like... <laughs> I'm just joking. The, uh, we were the, talking about your ego. But the thing right? is that the, the ego is not really a, the fact of like pride or any of those. It's just that they... They have it's like um drive. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got so you. like they have drive. It's more like ego. ambition and drive. Yeah. I got you, you. you want to get to the goal so bad that because you don't want to be broke mm. or you don't want to be gotcha. with that that insecurity you don't want to have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, I would I wouldn't necessarily say the insecurity. And when you say ego, so let me make sure everybody understands. When he's he's not m- more so ego, it's more passion. He's a very passionate individual. Right. So I don't raise egotistic. No, I, I, okay. No, I, I, I was messing with you guys. That's like what that. I'm saying. It's we were just messing. No, but, right. but, but a, a successful person does have an insane insecurity because if a person was broke, they do not want to be broke ever again. Do you see what I'm saying? So they but have to have massive broke. drive and execution Correct. in order to, to never get to that point again. That's what, that's the character trait of a successful individual. You guys, anybody, if they, a successful person, do you want to go back to where you were? They will say no. No. You see what I'm saying? So the more the story is, you have to you get you have to have a why, and then you have to have the exit plan. And the exit plan is for us as a fam as family business owners is that the goal is to be able to pass it on. Correct. Right. Like that's the, the whole point is to leave a legacy. That's that's the whole goal. And legacy, the word gets thrown around a lot, but like based on the conversations, of course, when you when people listen to this podcast, they will know that our legacy is a lot different from other people's. It's helping other families build a legacy for their family, which is what our event is for. Right. It's to, it's to help. United uh, families crafting legacies. Exactly. And and understanding. And a lot of times people, they try to build something, but they haven't even understood the basics of what they're building, right? So legacy is something that you either receive from a predecessor or that you're passing down to a next generation. So we're helping somebody, if they haven't been passed down anything, we're helping somebody build something they can pass down for generations. Mm. Not just one generation, not just two generations, not just three, but as many generations as can be. And a lot of that stems from the family business, right? So in the FamCon that we have coming up in October, uh, we're helping families understand, for one, what a legacy is, and then helping them visualize what their legacy is, and then giving them the necessary tools, the necessary uh, environment to help craft and then cultivate and then keep them accountable, right? Because accountability is probably the number one thing Mm -hmm. that will help people uh, get to wherever their goal is. And consistency. So for me, but I, how this kind of also started was I said, I want my picture on the wall. I got and you. And it really kind of started with us, me saying that. As a joke. As a in joke. In a sense, but she was serious. But I was serious because it's like, what are we leaving behind? Like their dad left them some things behind. So the thing, so what did you do with some of the things that he left behind? That's a legacy. He, he left something for you. Now, what are you doing with what he left with you, for you to give on to when you guys have children? So for us, it's more of let's help the community understand that we can use this technology to our advantage and take whether it's AI, because I love AI. They don't like some of the things I do with AI, but I love AI. <laughs> it's crazy uh, what you can do. It's crazy. Um, well, he's an AI person, so I take that back. But I, I like to do the images and things like that and create books and write. And, and we all are authors, by the way. So I, I, that was a mandatory thing that they had to write their own book. I said, because one, it gives you credibility. Two, it'll get you to understand that 
when you're out there, people need to know who you are. And a book, you can pour your heart into a book. So with FAMCOM, we're going to teach you a whole bunch of stuff. And we're going to have some great, amazing speakers as well. But our number one is about the dynamics, having your own family crest, having your own trust, having your own company seal, knowing what type of insurance is that can pay your family. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, because creating your own family bank, right? Becoming your own family bank. That's the part that I really love that you can become your own family bank. You don't have to go anywhere else to get any money because your family bank will have it. Um, creating that business. So what do you do? Taking all this information and creating into a business that's going to consistently generate revenue on a consistent basis. And then for those folks who may have something, they just want to chill out or they need some help, we got the family therapy that's gonna be there as well. And then we got something for our youth, it's called the youthpreneurs. So we wanted to make sure we incorporated them so they can be totally involved with the family business. They're the next generation. They're where, where the legacy is being passed down to. And and I always get excited on the family bank. I just wanted to kind of touch on that a little bit. Uh, think about it like this, right? For people who are listening who don't understand the full ins and outs of a family bank. I'm going to put it as simple as this. Let's just say you go to whatever your bank is, Chase, Bank of America, Navy Federal, whatever, and you apply for a loan, right? You always have some type of interest payment that has to be paid back to them. Mm -hmm. Having your own family bank, you end up going to your own family and borrowing that money. Mm -hmm. You set your own interest rate, but the interest rate is being paid back to you along with the money. So the money continues to build on top of each other rather than you paying it back to a bank and it's going is being outsourced somewhere else. So that's, so that's, that's a deep conversation. You want to, you want to speak for another hour? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's a whole but nother. People don't think about that. And where do we get this idea from, from the Rockefellers, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and so many other families as well, but uh, family businesses that, you know, have done things along the way. And, but if we start thinking that way, that we can be our own bank, our own family bank, a lot of people wouldn't be broke. And let me give one example. Uh, I had a Jamaican neighbor, (laughs) and I swear it had to be at least 10 people, 15 people in the house, right? So they would pool their money together, and they would do fish fries and things like that, and they would literally help that one person in the house get their house. Mm. Then they would do, everybody would pool together, then the next person, that money, will get the next person's house and then then they did that the same thing because it with the business as well that funded that business so think about how you wouldn't have to get any student loans if everybody's pooling their money together to help that one child if they're going to college or if that person is starting a business or if that person's starting a house but it's all still under one unit the main unit the fanpreneur that family business so when you think of it that way each family could be doing that. Nobody would be in debt. We wouldn't have some of the things that we're having. And that's one of the reasons why we started the Fampreneur. So you guys come join us so, at FAMCON. That's what I was going to say. FAMCON, October, what's the date again? October 12th, 12th to the 15th. To the 14th. And we're going to have a big, let me, I have to Wait, say 14th this. 14th or the 15th? It ends on the 14th with the masquerade ball, but it's from the 12th right. to the 15th. Okay. So I'm super duper excited because we're going to do something legacy wise. So we're going to have a big old masquerade ball where everybody's going to dress up um, towards the end of the, of the conference. And we're just going to have a really big dinner and just really fellowship because where we break bread is where we create dynasties. So. Let's go. Let's go. Well, guys, check out. I'm going to go ahead. Is it okay if I throw your link in the description for them? Sure, All sure, right. So sure. link's going to be down there. You guys can check it out. YouTube, wherever you're, you're going. What's Actually, what's the domain so if people are listening? Yeah, Fam, so fam- F-A-M. C O N Expo dot com. Famcon Expo dot com. Conference Expo. Yes, Famcon Expo. Famcon Expo dot com. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, go check it out, guys. Like, and thank you for being on here. I know thank this course. wasn't. We didn't plan this too far out. So thank you guys for coming down and, and just talking about building a family business. So if okay. you guys like this, go check it out. Where can people find you all at? Is there like a Fampreneur website? What's yeah, that look like? So there's. You can actually everywhere the Fampreneurs everywhere on every social media platform. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll see all three of us. And then yes. You know. Yo. Fanpreneur.com or fanpreneurs.com mm-hmm. on social media handles, social, um, our, our Instagram, Facebook. And we just created a brand new YouTube, so you may not see a lot on there right now, but you will because we got a lot of great things. They, they have a 
a pink and black podcast studio. <laughs> no, we don't. Don't, don't listen to don't. this, man. I don't do. this. <laughs> and, and, and if you do want to ask us questions personally, uh, you can find myself at alex.n.turner on Instagram. Uh, Tamara, T-A-M-A-R-R-A, Allen on all social media handles. A-L-L-E-N, not A-L-N. Thank you, sir. Yeah, for sure. And then you can find me, Marcus Turner Official, M-A-R-K-U-S, Turner right. Official on everywhere. Love it. Well, guys, go explore what they have going on. They Listen, if you have a family, definitely, definitely <laughs> go explore what they have coming out. I'm going to maybe try if I'm going to see if the wife will let me shimmy down there and uh, maybe bring her along with the baby. But um, guys, we do this every single week. We drop podcasts. We drop uh, videos for you guys to learn how to grow your online business and really just get to that next level. So if you enjoy this, go ahead, hit subscribe. If you're listening, leave a review. It helps us more than anything. And we hope you, these are valuable for you. We hope these change your life in some way. And I know it changes mine having these personal conversations. I get to learn something new every time, for especially sure. about family banks and what I need to do to, we'll with my wife. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll come back and talk about that. But uh, yeah, just core values and everything is it's amazing to learn. So thank you guys again for coming on. Everybody else, we'll see you very soon. And God bless you guys. God bless. Let's get it. Thanks, Thanks so much. <laughs>